Okay. Etomic Skinotony. Good morning. I'm just pulling in here at St. Patrick's Cemetery on this Wednesday a.m. Just about 7 o'clock in the a.m. on May 19th, 2021. In the lunar Cyclopis Tiskit Satos, the flower moon, our first summer moon, even though it's threatening to get cold and snow on us, or at least sleet in the next couple of days. And it's been mostly t shirt weather, but today I'm wearing a hoodie. Back to the hoodie. <laughs> Pulling in here at the cemetery because I got an interesting job. The wildlife calls have been off the hook, and uh, not a lot of, you know, interesting video. I did have one good uh big snake job that i did in the canyons where i had to like deconstruct somebody's fence basically and uh the old the melkor snake fencing which by the way has never been adequate to keep snakes out of any yards in the canyons and in this case only served to to help keep the snake in um i had to pull that iron off wrench it off and really oh, get in there to try to get the snake out. There we it took go. me an hour and a half when all was said and done, so I guess I earned my $50 on that one. <laughs> Come on. No, not going back. Come on. Done. Holy moly. Yeah. <laughs> this morning what I'm doing is I'm here to check on this badger trap that I have here at the cemetery because we got a badger who's digging holes. Big holes. All in and around grave sites. So the city's asked me to try to catch it. Came out yesterday, set up a trap, threw in a basically a whole chicken carcass, roasted chicken. No luck overnight. So I don't know, Badger could have already, probably has already moved on. But there's a big ground squirrel colony here in the cemetery, so we'll see. Maybe it'll come around again in the next day or two as it does its hunting thing. Um, the one that I'm really interested in learning about this morning, the, when the residents contact me, is a hedgehog trap. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's a house on the west side uh, that's for sale. And the owner says, somehow or another, there's come to be a hedgehog resident in that house, living kind of like a mouse or something. Uh, it was seen, observed once, and it ran away. And then, you know, now they just find droppings and bits of stolen food and stuff. Stolen onion ring, apparently, from the kitchen. Left it behind some boxes in one of the bedrooms. Um, anyway, I have set up a trap to see if I can catch the hedgehog. I'm hoping, I'm hoping. I put fruit in there. I put uh, grapes and watermelon. My, my friend Cass uh, has owned a hedgehog before. And in fact, we were joking that morning because <laughs> at my house, and here's another layer to the what's gone on in the last few days. At my house, I have a baby porcupine. Um, I guess there was a porcupine in Riverstone out along one of the bike trails, uh, a, a young one, baby, and it was out there for hours in the hot sun. Um, mamas do leave babies and go off and, and feed and stuff, but this one was really exposed right on a path where you get, you know, dogs walking and this kind of thing. Um, so I went and grabbed it. It is now at my house and we're going to take it to Sarah. Um, the reptile rescuer because she wants a hand at, at doing this porcupine. We've named him, well, Sarah gave, came up with the name Quilbert, which was just awesome. And Quilbert's been living in the training room the last couple of days in the jujitsu room. I'm going to have to really sweep those mats for quills before we get back to rolling on there. But um, yeah, Quilbert's been living in the jujitsu room and basically being shy. Coming in, Quilbert. Oh, poor baby. 
Poor baby. What are you crying about? What's wrong? What's wrong? Let's turn on the light. Oh, the baby. Hey, Quilbert, how you doing? I heard you crying in here. How come? You're missing your mama, probably. And now you're gonna go hide. Back in the hidey hole, every time. Yeah, so we'll have a visit with Sarah to look forward to this afternoon. Uh, right now, I've gotta get into the studio. We have beadwork jewelry commencing this morning with Star Crop Beard Wolf as the instructor. So I am looking forward to seeing what the ladies are able to produce in this study unit. I have to sit down and make a, a montage video from the sewing. I have a lot of clips and stuff that I should probably throw together. Anyway, right now I'm headed across the river here to the west side to pick up Manda Moonshine and then we will zigzag across to the north and grab Brittany Colleen and head into the studio. Hello. Hello, it's Brenda returning your call. Oh, good morning. No, we... Good morning. No, we did not catch anything. No hedgehog last night, hey? No, I didn't even hear it. Oh, okay. Like I, I haven't heard it since the onion ring thing on Sunday. <laughs> okay. Or that was Monday. So I haven't heard any of it. <laughs> so, I, no, we'll give it a try, I guess, for another day. And see. Yeah, maybe, maybe, um, I don't know if you guys have anything high protein. I was thinking if you didn't hit the fruit, maybe try the tuna thing tonight. Drop some tuna in the back there and see if you'll go for that. If he's, okay. If he's even around. Yeah, because... Yeah. Yeah, I can do that because, yeah, that's what it said when I was researching was uh, tuna. Yeah. Something smelly like tuna. Yeah, let's uh, try that for tonight and see how okay. that goes. Sure, I can do. I can put some in the back there. Okay, cool. All right, and I'll keep in touch with you. Great. All right, thank you. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> No tuna. hedgehog yet. <laughs> hedgehogs like tuna. And there was no ba there was no badger. Cass said the hedgehogs uh, are like cats. She said, "Well, it's weird." She says they'll eat mice. Yeah. But at the same time, they like peeled grapes and watermelon and. Oh wow! <laughs> Isn't that weird? Yeah. I had no idea. I thought they would be like vegetarians because they thought look like, they or, the, or they might eat some little insects or it's something. I couldn't even see them eat. Well, I thought they'd eat like grasshoppers and like grain and fruit. And yeah, stuff. stuff like that, eh? Hey? Greens, you know. Mice. Yeah, <laughs> all of a sudden mice. <laughs> all right. I don't know. We're learning about hedgehogs, but we'll see if we can catch one. It's not sounding good. It's not sounding promising if she didn't hear it overnight. Mm -hmm. You might have took off. Yeah, or croaked. Oh. Huh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, Ryan. It's Sandy Lodge and uh, Tudor. It was a strange thing happened this morning. Um, I was up at um, about quarter to four, and there was an animal in the cage. And then uh, I got up after that, and it was gone. Um, I could see it, it was black, and it was Houdini. really trying to get out. <laughs> I couldn't see any holes in the cage. And I thought, that's kind of strange. I was wondering if that was a black cat. It's David I Blaine. Cat <laughs> the door being opened. Um, can you give me a call? I don't see anything bent or anything in the cage. I mean, neither do I see any way it can get out. But it was definitely there because I saw it twice. I saw it about an hour later as well. It sounds like I'm going to have to go to two different states. 403 380 2212. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Well, I, I don't know. Lots of stuff could go in there. I just wonder what's going to get out of there. It's, can't get out of that cage. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to check out what that's about. That, that's, a, that's one of the 
clients that I have a raccoon trap at. Well, I've, I've already got one raccoon out of there, and I'm trying to get more. So, we'll see. Where's this Brittany? Good morning. Good morning. No hedgehog. No hedgehog? No. Is it a hedgehog? At that or place. Oh, I'm like butt calling my friend. <laughs> Put the phone away. Drive. Camera to you. I'm going to make a quick trip to Coldale. Mr. Quilbert. What are you starting on? I got a planchette. It's for a pop socket. For what? A pop socket. For the back end. Oh, I see. I started it a long time ago, but I never finished it. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's like my uh, oogie boogie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go pick up Quilbert and go see Sarah in Coldale. All right, Quilbert. What you up to, buddy? Are you ready to go to Sarah's house? Hey, should we go visit Sarah? You climb in your kennel for me? Let's go in the kennel and let's go visit Sarah. All right. Oh, well, you can't be leaving these quills around on my jujitsu mat. And get in the kennel. We're gonna go for a ride. I'm gonna have to really clean up these mats. Hey. Lions for him. Oh yeah. I heard they're good for them. Yeah? That's what I read. All right, Mr. Quilbert. I'm gonna leave you here with the Sarah to take care of. See what we can do. Yeah, you have to keep me updated. Yeah, sure. Haven't got him eating at all yet, hey? Yeah, and then um, have you contacted any wildlife rehabilitation centers yet? No, but I know the people at Medicine River will take him if I want them to, okay. you know, I work with them quite a bit, um, but I know they're probably just as overwhelmed with wildlife stuff as, so if we can take a little bit, if we can, um, if we can do a little bit of some easy stuff, <laughs> like well, not it, broken animals, <laughs> it's not broken, but yeah. to, so like, if you're okay with me, contact me just to figure out what he's eating. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, call um, Carol at Medicine River. I'll give you her contact and stuff. And like, hey, Ryan, so, like, we yeah, just we've got this baby porcupine so here. Back in our ecosystem. Great. I think, I think maybe before too long, hey? I mean, he doesn't, from what I read about them... They, they stay with their mom for up to a year. Yeah, they stay but with they, them at least, at least the whole summer. Yeah, yeah learn how to forage. So that's why I'm like... How do we find you things that you can forage? We've got raspberry bushes in the back. You can dig them uh, just if you like. <laughs> yeah, it's the learning part, eh? Hey? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, if you're okay with me, just yeah, me. definitely can contact them? them and see like, see what's the best thing, what's forage. the best technique, and if it's and if we should bring it to them, we'll bring it to them. Yeah, but why is so on that? Yeah, that's doing the wrong thing by trying to help. Where I don't even know if Quilbert's a boy or a girl yet. <laughs> I don't think I want to lift that skirt. <laughs> he's, he's, he's quite stickery. No. <laughs> uh, I will probably not try to touch him. So, 
And the less human contact he has, is probably better. Probably better, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's why he will probably end up in the garage as soon as I make him a spot. Yes. And so there's no kids, no people, quiet. Just quiet. Good away ideas. From, away from the people. But yeah. he's got to eat first. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we got to get him fed. Get him fed and hydrated and stuff. Definitely. But and he's been drinking water then? Or? I think so. He definitely like messed around the water and was really mucked up after leaving him one night with it. But then yesterday I couldn't tell if he drank or not. But he's peeing. So he's hydrated a little bit. All right. Okay, so see Sounds you and we'll stay in touch. Well. Awesome. Quilbert's got a place for the time being. Yeah, it's afternoon time now, and uh, studio's closed. I'm gonna go meet Star, the instructor, uh, at the craft store to buy some supplies, but I'm stopping off at Houdini Raccoon residence to see what's up. Oh, hello. Hey. Oh, okay. Yeah. She want me to just go through? Sure, here. that'd be great. Yeah. Let's see what's going Thank on. Thank you. For <laughs> I, I can't understand why she wasn't curious to look. I did look. I came out twice. But you know what? I think whatever was in there bent the cage. Yeah? Yep. You can see. Yeah. I had to get up, start to cut my grass before it rains. You see, it's all slid this way. It is. Yeah. It is. It slid it's this way, but geez, that's not a whole lot of room. No. All the same. But look at this. Uh, this will move somehow. Look. Oh yeah, that always moves. That's yeah. that's the spring mechanism. Well, yeah, it but from the cage. their side, they can't move that. Hey. No. They can push like. Well, that's a that's as much room, hey. Yep, but you can see all the food is gone. Yeah. That's just seeds that was yeah, blown around yesterday so bad. Yeah, well, I definitely got something in there. And yep. But it right. was black, and it had a big tail. Huh. Ha, ha, ha. I should get, I'll get the broom and sweep all that up before you put something. Did yeah. you bring the other cage with you? The I do. Be strong well, I have, no, I have lots of cages. I don't yeah. know which one I used on you last, but I, I'm going to switch this out with another cage and... Okay. Just to be sure, since since cut. whatever is going on here got out of this, I don't even know how it... Can a raccoon fit out of there? Maybe. 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 I've seen some crazy stuff. I saw something online where a raccoon like fit into a, a drain pipe. Okay, so I'm now stopped to uh, set up a trap. Me and Star went to the craft store, bought a ton load of stuff, like almost a thousand dollars worth of craft supplies, beadwork supplies in here. We had a three foot long, literally three foot long receipt. And now I'm just setting up some traps on my way back toward the house. I have to go pick up the kids from their dads this evening. It's time for them to come home and um but traps to set on the way this next house uh has a covid positive case so i'm being careful wearing my mask and uh and they've already like opened the gates and stuff for me so there's should be just fine but they've got a skunk in the shed behind their place It's been coming under the back gate and then going under their shed and coming up on their deck. We'll go around. Oh, 
I don't even know what's the best place to walk, but I'm not going to be licking the bottom of my sandals anyway. All right. Let's see what we got going on. Oh, yeah. Probably been coming under here. Yeah, I think I'll just set the trap right here. See if you can catch a skunky right on the concrete pad. You gonna stay? <laughs> Can you believe this? The morning after, I, I swear I was catching rattlesnakes two days ago. <laughs> now it's snowing. So much for our first summer moon. Yeah, it's Thursday, and I'm gonna probably roll into a new video here, but I just wanted to put an end cap on the piece with the porcupine for Quilbert. It looks like he is gonna be going up to Medicine River where, rather than staying long-term at, at Sarah's. She contacted Medicine River, and it is the case that porcupines need their mothers to teach them the foraging through the summer. Without that, when they're in captivity and they're being rehabbed, they typically don't learn to forage for themselves well and, and do not survive when uh, rewilded. So it's got to be done very carefully if, if it's going to be done at all. And so we're sending them to Medicine River for a stab at, uh, at rehab there. We'll see. But yeah, that is the story of Quilbert. We may or may not actually, you know, hear from Quilbert again, but uh, the summer is going to carry a lot of different cases, and, and I've I've just got to move them as I can, you know, do what I can with them, send them to uh, a next step, and wish them the best. Anyway, going to get my Thursday on here, my snowy Thursday, <laughs> favorite day of the week really crazy gonna go pick up the girls and start work i don't think there'll be any animal calls today but we better check the badger that maybe i just better check him quick right now <laughs> nope still no badger